is going on everybody? My name is John Solo and welcome to Star Wars 101 in my first video of 2017. Today we are talking about one of my favorite characters from Rogue One, K2SO. To be totally honest, before I saw the movie, I was not really that excited for this character. I sort of felt like his only reason for being included was because the main characters needed a droid sidekick like the main characters from other Star Wars stories we've been told. Whether this was the case or not though, I've got to say that I was pleasantly surprised and actually really enjoyed the character a lot. And it is because of this that he is the subject of today's discussion, so without further ado, let's get into it. Number one the basics. K2SO is a KX series security droid. He was constructed on the planet Vulpter by the manufacturer Arakid Industries. He is 2.16 meters or 7 feet 1 inches tall and is 12 years old. Number 2. Exception to the rule. After the Separatists were wiped out and their production of droids was halted, the Senate rolled out a mandate prohibiting the creation of battle droids. Arakid Industries were able to curtail these restrictions by classifying the KX series as security droids. The KX the X-Series' programming included built-in exceptions to the usual hard-coded restriction against harming organics. Instead, it defaults and complies to orders given by Imperial military personnel ranked lieutenant or higher. So essentially, unlike all the other droids being manufactured legally, the KX-Series can hurt whomever it wants as long as it's given the orders by a member of the Imperial military. Number 3 attitude problem. Out of all the droids we've come across in the Star Wars universe, K2 is definitely one of the sassiest. This is the result of being reprogrammed by Captain Cassian Andor. However, we didn't have it fully explained to us in the movie why the reprogramming had this result. It's actually because Cassian had to reformat K2SO's entire personality in order to get him to follow rebel orders. To do this, he wiped out most of Arakid Industries' presets. One of these presets was actually a sensor that's applied to the artificial intelligence of the KX series droids. The sensor typically makes them quiet and devoid of all emotion like you would imagine a security droid to be. So without that sensor being there, the end result is that K2 pretty much just says whatever he wants to. Number four trust. Interestingly, despite being completely reprogrammed, Cassian still doesn't fully trust K2SO. This is shown in the movie when K2 expresses his frustration that Jin is allowed to have a gun and he's not. Apparently, building trust with Cassian is part of the reason why K2 disobeys some of his minor orders, like on Jeddah when he was told to stay with the ship and he didn't. Admittedly, it seems pretty backwards, but what he's trying to do is convince Cassian that the advice he provides on missions can be trusted and that he can be a valuable asset in more situations than he's utilized in. Number five, body by design. It's pretty clear that the body proportions of the KX series are exaggerated beyond the human norm, but the engineers at Arakid take pride in this design. K2's weird body shape gives him the mobility, coordination, and precision of a human athlete. He has complex gyro balance systems that keep him upright when he's running and changing direction, something that we don't see most droids have at all. Number six, poor posture. When K2 was being designed behind the scenes of Rogue One, no one planned on him having the slouch that we see him have in the film. It was the actor who played him, Alan Tudyk, that added this personal touch. He said that by slouching or doing anything that read as human, it added personality to the character. He also had to play the character while wearing stilts, so maybe slouching just also helped him out with his sense of balance. Number seven. Listen in. Because of the built-in communications booster we see sticking out of his back, K2 is able to scan and access certain Imperial communication frequencies. Although the ability proves useful, Cassian sometimes tells K2 not to interface with the networks. This is because accessing them can alert the Empire of their presence and leave digital footprints. Number eight all in one. The versatility that K2 and his fellow KX series droids have is not something we see much of in the original trilogy. He's got a humanoid shape, great dexterity, and can even pilot over 40 different Imperial transport vessels. He essentially has the abilities of an astromech droid, a protocol droid, and a superhuman. Number nine, the last of his kind. According to the visual guide, K2's design is representative of a disappearing design philosophy. The reason for this, and this is actually kind of funny, is because the major droid manufacturers in the Star Wars universe realized that they could make more money by selling specialty droids as opposed to multifunctional models. That's why in episodes four and beyond, the majority of the droids we see serve a singular purpose, with the biggest exception I can think of right now being astromech droids. This may sound kind of cynical, but the greed of the droid manufacturers is probably the most realistic part of the Star Wars galaxy. Kind of makes you wonder, like, which of these droid companies are the Apple of the Star Wars galaxy and the Windows of the Star Wars galaxy? I don't know. Kind of cool, though. Adds a level of depth 
You know what I mean? Number 10, Arakid Industries. In addition to the KX series, Arakid Industries manufactured a multitude of droids that we see not just in the other Star Wars movies, but in Clone Wars and Rebels as well. They made the Separatist Recon Droid, the Viper Probe, which debuts in The Empire Strikes Back, the RA-7 Protocol Droid, which is actually what 3PO's red arm comes from, the ID-9 Seeker Droid, and the Internal Systems Probe Droid. And that was the final fact for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Star Wars 101. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you letting me know by hitting that like button down below. If you want to stay as updated as possible on the new content, then obviously the best way to do that is to hit that subscribe button down below as well, and also maybe hit that little bell icon, so that way you can receive notifications when I upload and won't miss anything that I talk about that you might be interested in. And also another way to stay updated is to follow me on all of my social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my subreddit, where you can also post theories of your own and other video recommendations. Whether you do all of that or none of it at all is totally up to you guys, but let me just say, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I appreciate any support you can offer, and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. May the force be with you, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.